note that all counselors are here except Counselor DiLorenzo, whom we are still sending our thoughts and prayers to. Let's go ahead and do our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Excellent. Um, at this time, um, India, is there any announcements and or petitions? Uh, no announcements or presentations, but we did have some citizens that would like to speak. Are we at the point there right now? Um, citizen statements and petitions? Yes, ma'am. So we have one person who raised their hand in the attendee box. That would be Ms. Valerie Rossetti. Ms. Rossetti. Please remember, please remember to give your full name, your address, and please remember there is a three-minute time limit. Yes, uh, Madam Mayor and members of the Town Council, I'm Val Rossetti of Kenmore Road, Bloomfield, a member of the Conservation Energy and Environment Committee since 2007. I'm commenting tonight because it's important for the council to pass the climate emergency resolution tonight. There's just no more time to waste. You know, back in 2013, Bloomfield was a state leader in the Clean Energy Communities Program. It pledged to benchmark its buildings for energy use, create a municipal energy plan, reduce its energy usage by 20%. And we never quite succeeded and many years have now passed. This year, using a grant from Sustainable Connecticut with the assistance of engineering faculty at UConn, our environmental planner and the efforts of the CEEC, both the town and board of ed buildings have finally been benchmarked. Their weather normalized electricity and natural gas use have been migrated to the EPA portfolio manager energy tracking software at zero cost to the town. Monthly data is now automatically uploaded by Eversource and Connecticut Natural Gas saving staff data entry time. But it's now up to the facilities managers to use the software, which can compute the greenhouse gas data necessary for the plan to cut these emissions. With staff turnover and retirements, an annual meeting CEEC had been having with DPW and Board of Ed facilities managers has kind of fallen by the wayside. And for the town to save both money and the environment, an ongoing evaluation of energy use with an inventory of completed and projected energy upgrades needs to be in place. Also for this resolution to truly impact the town, cooperation from the Board of Ed, which uses 60% of the town's overall energy is vital. The CEEC alone can't make that happen. The town leaders have to ensure that it happens. Once the resolution is passed, we need an RFP from the town for a consultant who can complete this plan to cut greenhouse gas emissions. And we hope that that can happen expeditiously with the funds already allocated in the budget and that a finished plan can be in place well before the two years cited in the amended resolution. Bloomfield's town councils, managers, mayors, everyone has been fully supportive of our town's efforts to create an environmentally and economically healthy community and to do its part to avoid catastrophic climate change. But it's now time to actually back that support with action. And uh, finishing up my time, I just wanted to make a personal plea that the town move ahead with some solar energy for the roof of the human services building and for the libraries that are coming. The Board of Ed managed to put a major array on Carmen A Race and to create the state's first community solar project behind the Board of Ed offices. But none of our town buildings feature solar energy. Many towns have acted issuing RFPs for power purchase agreements which require no front costs and provide immediate dollar savings on clean electricity. So saving money, saving the environment, a win-win, and that should no longer be delayed. Thank you for the extra few seconds. Appreciate your um, acting on the resolution. 
Thank you. Are there any more? I don't see any hands raised in the attendee box at this time. Okay, thank you. At this time, we're gonna go, um, we're gonna move in uh, for reports from our subcommittees. If your subcommittee have not met, please just let our audience know your next meeting date and time. I will start with Councilor Wong with Community Services. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I did not report out from our April 22nd uh, meeting, so I am going to attempt to give those updates and reports and weed out some of the things that have been outdated. So our last meeting was on April 22nd, and some of the social youth services, senior service and leisure services items may overlap because they work very closely together. Uh, some of the social and youth services and current programs include um, upcoming um, partnering with Capital Workforce Partners to employ youth this summer. It's a six-week program uh, for Bloomfield residents only. We do have some ongoing utility assistance programs um, that are still available, uh, like if you're for your Eversource bill support, homeowner assistance um, funded by the American Rescue Plan. Uh, the deadline is quickly quickly approaching, so please contact Youth and Services, Youth and Social Services at 860-242-1895. Uh, some senior services updates include the Pilates, yoga, and bingo programs, AARP tax aid program completed, I believe, uh, this middle of this month. So if you have any more questions regarding senior services, please contact them at 860-243-8361. And moving into leisure services, uh, we are moving forward with some summer programs, also offering leadership programs and expanding to 14 and 15 year olds this season. Uh, so we continue to conduct those same events um, like bingo nights, family nights, um, painting under the stars and family game nights and really cool events like that. So um, please contact me here services for more information. Um, something really cool that I think that we're going to continue to conver conversations around our organic gardens. And I think those conversations are going to continue in June. So please look out for that. Uh, we do have some summer events kicking off. So uh, we do have Celebrate Bloomfield, which is kicking off at June on June 24th. Those include summer concerts and they will be at Rockwell Avenue like they were last year. We have bicycle tours uh, led by Octagon Cycling Club. So that's really exciting. We have a bunch of bikers um, on council up. I know that. And the mayor's ball to raise money for community-based programs. So that's all kicking off in June. So those are pretty exciting. Some upcoming events also are Memorial Day Parade, traditional parade in town center that's happening on the 31st of May. And we have Juneteenth, June 19th, uh, which will be the MLK mural unveiling. So for more information, please contact Leisure Services at 860-243-2923. I'm uh, moving into some of our community reporting, Family Resource Center report, also ABC report, Alliance for Bloomfield's Children. Uh, programming continuity include early childhood school readiness grant solicitation, so they're working hard on getting some additional dollars to support some of that. Ongoing playgroup planning and diaper bank donations. Uh, challenges that they continue to have conversations focused around include access to technology, mental health, and security. Um, quick report from Alliance for Bloomfield's Children include program development focusing on American Rescue Plan and recovery and working with community agencies to further those plans and quality enhancement for home daycares. So that's kind of exciting because we need some, I know they talked about really needing some enhanced uh, quality training for, you know, small businesses such as home daycares. Moving into the beautification uh, and kind of a CEC kind of lumped in report together. So we had a wonderful event on Arbor Day, Trees for Bloomfield Initiative. Uh, I think most of council attended. It was an awesome day. Uh, we had a large group of volunteers. We had the news channels out there, including VOAG and high school students. We planted oaks and maple trees at Rockwell Ave and Billy Lee Field and in front of the Carmen A. Race um, Middle School location. So kudos to the Beautification CEC for hosting that event, DPW for the support that they gave and all the staff, especially the services and Dave, for really making that an awesome event um, for the town. Uh, the Beautification Committee did also host a Mother's Day walk that happened this past Mother's Day and upcoming events that they would like you to be abreast on are tree and shrub care and pruning workshop happening on the 22nd of May on 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. and you can register via the Bloomfield Leisure Services uh, website. 
And lastly, uh, the CEC, uh, Conservation Energy Environment Committee, uh, program and planning initiatives continue to focus around climate crisis and reducing greenhouse gas, um, environmental justice items, and solar panels, uh, potentially on the human services building, as Ms. Rossetti just reported out as she's a member of that same committee, um, understanding options for an electric school bus, and October Shred Day that's coming up. I know that's a popular community event. Uh, so the next community service subcommittee meeting is Tuesday, June 8th at 6 p.m. That concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Abin Education and Finance, Councilor Curtin. Uh, uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'll start with the Administration Education Council subcommittee. We met uh, last Wednesday, May 5th at um, 6.30. Uh, I'm just going to go over briefly a couple of items that we discussed, and we did refer a couple of those items to the council here tonight for a recommendation and hopefully a vote. We did receive a status update regarding the IT upgrades within the, the council chambers. Um, IT is working on what does the council chambers look like and what kind of hybrid system are we going to go back into uh, per the state. I know that um, I think May 19 is when everything is gonna be open, but I think the town of Bloomfield, as many municipalities wanna still be cautious and make sure that our resident safety is utmost at the, the head of anything we do. So including our um, council members. So I know it's gonna be a hybrid system. They're gonna come back with a cost and what that would look like uh, in regards. I mean, there were we talked about many different options and having plexiglass uh, at the diocese, reduce how many folks sit up there, some folks being able to remotely um, uh, log into some of those uh, council meetings. The one thing that uh, I think that's important to consider is that we do have a provision within our charter that allows us to continue on this platform. So I think that's a good thing, even though that uh, the governor uh, executive orders uh, will go away after the 19th. I think locally we're, we're able to still have those remote meetings. So that's it for now. I think we're gonna get a more um, extensive uh, cost and breakdown of what that would look like uh, in the month of June. Uh, we also received a report and I know that the director of uh, Parks and Rec, uh, Mr. Malesko will talk about it tonight is the Farmerton River Park uh, plant and uh, the demolition of the, the houses that's on that property. Uh, I'm not gonna go too much in depth uh, in that discussion right now. I'm gonna wait for Malesco to give um, a report to the full council to do his presentation and, and for us to have a discussion how we proceed from that point on. The committee did vote to go ahead with the um, director recommendation to demolish the, the house I think there's a lot of reasons behind it. So I will um, refrain from saying any more on this topic until we get into that discussion. Uh, the next item on the agenda that we did uh, discuss is the, the resolution for Juneteenth. That's currently on the council agenda. Committee did vote to send that for tonight. So we will have an opportunity to vote on that. And uh, the next item is the CEC. It was discussed earlier by uh, Val Rossetti, the, the committee did vote to move ahead. I think there is uh, some questions that came up in regards to language. So I know the town attorney was looking into it, whether or not we're able to vote on it tonight, but I'll wait until we get to that discussion. Uh, I guess there's a process in place where uh, the committee approved uh, to move ahead with this. There were some other changes, minor changes. So I, I'll, uh, from my standpoint, I believe that um, I initially thought that everything was fine, but I will wait for, for that item to come up so we could discuss how we proceed based on our rules of um, these items. Uh, the next item that we discuss is basically a uh, discussion around the town manager's goals, which in, we had a robust discussion on this in regards to setting uh, manager's goal right now. I think uh, based on uh, some of the comments that we've that I heard from members from the committee, I think it's prudent right now to hold off on setting any goals and priorities for the next town manager. I think the, we need to let the, the search committee along with uh, our consultants to go through the process. I believe to get into any sort of uh, public discussion right now, <laughs> whatever 
a manager goals may be that we haven't hired, I, I think it's uh, premature and it's uh, kind of put into uh, the, the carriage before the horse. Uh, so that's the end of my report for administration education, Madam Mayor. In regards to finance, uh, the next meeting is next Monday. That's uh, May 17th uh, at, uh, at 6.30. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Public Safety Council Goff. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, the Public Safety Subcommittee met tonight uh, before the council meeting. Um, we got our reports from um, the um, police chief and the uh, fire directors, uh, as well as a report from Bloomfield Volunteer Ambulance. I'll go briefly through this. Um, it was not uh, on an April to April basis. We had uh, 47 reported uh, crimes in Bloomfield this year versus 33 last April. So we were definitely up for uh, up on a year over year basis. Um, 193 year to date versus 178 year to date last year. Um, the, you know, that's not great news, but the, you know, there is sort of bad news, good news here. Uh, the bad news, of course, is that we did, this was the April statistics, so we did have one homicide, which I think we've discussed at previous meetings. Uh, the chief gave a Brief, uh, very brief update. The uh, suspect, um, the accused in that, is currently being held at a women's facility, uh, and there was nothing more to report. Uh, the good news, if there, if if uh, we would take it as that, is that although there, the crimes were up for the month, they were um, they were not the uh, violent crimes. They were basically burglaries and larcenies, the same kind of shoplifting break-ins that we've seen before. Counselor. Uh, uh, Counselor, yes, I'm, yes. I'm so sorry to um, interrupt. Counselor Mary, can you turn your video off, sir? Her... Go ahead, Counselor Gall. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, so uh, the um, we had 10 burglaries for the month. Uh, we had 32 larcenies, which was mostly shoplifting. Uh, the usual thing at Capaco. So, um, you know, so, something of concern and the chief is uh, trying to um, look at what we can do to deal with that and get the, uh, you know, obviously get the incidents down. Um, we had 45 motor vehicle accidents versus about 46 last month. Um, so that's sort of at the usual run rate, if you will. Uh, the speed shield is being, um, uh, uh, put out at uh, various streets where we have uh, citizen complaints of speeding. Uh, fortunately, there were no citizen complaints against the police department this month. And there were only uh, really three use of force incidents. Um, as usual, most of them involved uh, situations where uh, people were very distraught. And fortunately, the outcome in all cases was positive. There were no, you know, the, the use of force, remember, for our police department is anytime a weapon is even uh, drawn or threatened to be drawn, that counts as a use of force. We did not really have any, uh, any uh, shots fired or anything like that. Um, in terms of the fire departments, very similar statistics. The center fire department uh, had 43 calls in April, 157 year to date. Most of those calls were smoke detector related, uh, the usual kind of uh, call that they get, nothing major. Blue Hills Fire Department, very similar statistics, 159 calls year to date, 36 in the month of April. Uh, both fire departments are completing their fiscal year budgets for the 2021-22 fiscal year, and uh, that information will be coming out soon. Uh, with the uh, Bloomfield Volunteer Ambulance, we discussed the special meeting they had at the end of April to talk about the ability to continue to uh, operate on the current hybrid volunteer um, AMR as a secondary response uh, 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 model. Uh, they're hopeful of being able to find a way to increase volunteerism, and um, that's, uh, you know, that's in the works. Uh, the last thing I will report on very briefly was the, um, the uh, through the Public Safety Committee, we instituted the Traffic Calming Program, which the Council instituted late last year. That is getting underway. I attended the second Traffic Calming meeting. I was uh, unavailable for the first one. Uh, and I do want to report to the Council, and I reported this to the Chief and the, the subcommittee, 
uh, what a successful um, initiative this is so far. The council should take great pride in this. Uh, they had over the, the main course, uh, the main um, topic of discussion last time was traffic on Woodland Avenue. And we had over 30 people attend that meeting and a large portion of them spoke. A large portion of them made their voices heard, made comments and um, I think really alerted the uh, not only the, the police department for enforcement, but the town engineer, the town planner, uh, you know, really alerted them to some of what's going on, uh, what citizens are seeing in their, you know, out their doors and on their streets. Um, Jonathan Teasy, the town engineer, had proposed some very um, preliminary. Uh, ideas for solutions. That will be a next step of the committee. Uh, but so far, there's been a lot of interest and a lot of um, citizen involvement. I think this will continue. Uh, I'm very anxious to see as we move down the road, uh, what kind of solutions we will, uh, we will propose and, and hopefully try and find out what works and doesn't work. So uh, that concludes my report, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor. And once again, sorry to interrupt, but I just want to remind Council that everyone sees everything that you do, right? That's the um, downside maybe of being on TV, but everyone sees what you do. So please, let's be mindful um, of not picking our teeth, not cleaning our teeth while we're on camera. I don't know about you all, but my, my phone will blow up when people see something a little off. So just let's be mindful of that. Um, Committee on Committees, Councilor Calhoun. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, co uh, Committee on Committees met um, for a special session on um, 429, May 29th, um, and which is on the council agenda to move forward volunteers um, to replace and to place in um, to committees and or commissions. We do have to meet, and I'm hoping it will be next Monday to finalize the Philly Park Committee. Um, there are some suggested changes to their, um, their, their task moving forward, as well as um, reappointing uh, the committee itself. So as we uh, get to the portion of the agenda to move those volunteers forward, we shall do that. And um, again, I'm, I'm in hopes without conflict of other committees that we can address um, Philly Park. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Counselor. Um, next Monday is finance as well. So that's, just, that's why I said conflict. Yeah. Right. So uh, we'll work it out. Yep. Um, Counselor. Uh, Land Use and Economic Development, Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, our committee met on April 20th and reported out at the last uh, council meeting. Our next meeting date is next Tuesday, the 18th. Uh, a couple of items that we are will be moving forward on are the uh, TIF uh, policy uh, directives, which uh, we are expecting a new draft back from our consultant. And there will also be some discussion with regard to uh, the uh, transfer of property at 15 Douglas Street for development. There may be other items, but I haven't, we haven't got an agenda yet today. Uh, count, uh, we're still awaiting uh, uh, some, some information on the status of uh, our planning director, Mr. Geiner, who's been out since uh, for quite a while. So thank you very much. Thank you. At this time, we'll move into council old business. 1516-12, consider and take action regarding the Farmington River Park plan house demolition. Um, Councilor Curtin, do you want to go or do you want to let... Um, well, what I will do is to let uh, Mr. Malesko go first uh, before we put a motion on the floor for his presentation to the full council. Okay. Good evening. Thank you, Madam Mayor, members of the council. Um, I'm just going to go through some of the excerpts that I put together for the uh, the background memo. And uh, in February 2018, the Leisure Services Department and Recreation Committee were charged with developing a master plan for the Farmington River Park. The Farmington River Park is the home to a blend of uses, including fishing, birding, hiking, and riverfront access. The property is 78 acres, including a pond, river access to the Farmington River, and is currently 
an underdeveloped, underdeveloped parcel um, with the simple trail system. As part of the charge, the RFP was released uh, with the following scope of work. Um, the scope of work included, but not limited to site analysis, assessment, community outreach, and public input, uh, park master plan schematics, including design development, phasing of construction and costs and the maintenance and revenue generations. Um, through, the R, through the competitive RFP process, uh, Fuss and O'Neill was the selected firm to handle the plan for us. Um, so over the course of 12, just over 12 months, um, we worked on the plan. And in, Jan in January of 2019, the Recreation Committee um, moved forward with recommending the proposed plan with a final anticipated cost total in $526,000 for full implementation. Um, the priorities of work completed were discussed with the top three items being culvert replacement, demolition of the house, and design and construction of the pavilion slash shelter. Um, the plan was then brought back to the administ uh, administration edu education uh, subcommittee at the March 4th, 2019 meeting and then brought to the full council for the March 11th, 2019 meeting. Since the adoption of the plan, we have since replaced the culvert, installed the safety guardrail uh, to the, in the amount of $19,450. Um, we contracted services for an envir environmental review mitigation report for pre-demolition in just over $4,000. Um, Department of Public Works has done some in-kind work for us, included uh, Clarence from behind the house, providing a little bit more access for us uh, for the waterfront so you can see from the heart of the park. Um, that's currently ongoing as we speak. Um, in addition to clearing um, access for the access road going down into the heart of the park. Um, we've also solicited funding for trail mapping and signage from the Wild and Scenic Lower Farmington River Salmon Brook Small Grants in the amount of $12,000, excuse me, $1,200. Um, and then solicitation of quotes to, to, to demolish the house. Um, so we were awarded the, uh, the funding from the Wild and Scenic Lower Farmington River and Salmon Brook. Um, so we're going to be moving forward with developing a trail map system um, very shortly. We're actually uh, just uh, issued on our end uh, the purchase order today. So once that is approved, we'll obtain the services. Um, we'll keep it on task over here for the house. Um, out of the three quotes that we received, the uh, qualified low quote came back in at $74,000, which included the following, house demolition, environmental remediation, cleanup miscellaneous work, as well as remove and dispose the foundation. Backfill with material supplied by the town, grade cap with six inches of topsoil and seed. We did do an alternative because the plan called for the, um, the not only for the house to be demolished, but for us to retain the chimney that, that is in the house, as well as the foundation with the plan of building a pavilion on top of, uh, on top of the foundation. So we wanted to put it out into two because we, through some preliminary discussions, we realized that this was gonna be a little bit more than what the, just the initial costs were going to be, which according to the plan was, in, a, a, was quoted to be approximately 60,000. So the beta alternative came in at $114,000. So it was $40,000 more than to just demo and return it um, back to its uh, original grade, which included uh, work provided with the following exception. Um, in addition, do not remove the foundation cap, the existing foundation wooden frame and asphalt shingle roof. Uh, we needed to develop some type of system to retain um, um, uh, not to compromise the foundation, to make sure that it wasn't getting wet. Um, during this initial process, when we did the plan with Fuss and O'Neill, we did have a structural analysis of, um, of the foundation. Um, it was actually, it was deemed that the water was not getting into the basement and it was still structurally sound, which is part of the reason why we thought it would be a good idea to keep the foundation in the chimney and to repurpose it um, with a pavilion on top of it. After discussion and um, you know, through, um, through a couple of capital improvement projects, um, we did go ahead, we did recommend working with the, uh, uh, the recreation committee, we did develop our capital improvements uh, list uh, that was provided to, to the manager and staff and then recommended over to the town council. Um, we did put in for an, another, uh, for an additional $150,000 for this year 
in order to move forward with the pavilion. Um, you know, through cuts and ads, it didn't make it to the council for, for approval. Um, so and we did that last year as well during for the uh, fiscal year 2021, we put in for, for money in the capital budget as well. It just hasn't been the, the top priority uh, for the department or the, the committee to this point. Um, this year it was the number two. Um, so after discussion, going over, going over these um, um, quotes with, with the, uh, the committee, the committee was recommending um, to, to still move forward with this, uh, um, with the project as is, with maintaining the, uh, the foundation. So my concern was, is out of the existing funds, we don't have the, the, the current level of funding to move forward with keeping the foundation, keeping the chimney, and then adding the pavilion on top of it. Um, but we do have money to tear down the house and um, based on my recommendation to knock, it, knock in the, the foundation um, and return it to its natural grade. So my recommendation to the council is um, after reviewing the quotes to move forward, we'll proceed in with house demolition to include total, total demolition of the house and the foundation, which includes the chimney in the amount of $74,000. This recommendation was made after review of our remaining project allocation totaling $99,470. In addition, this recommendation was also made due to the fear of the unknown. If the town decides to move, to move forward with the ad alternate, which includes demolition of the house for keeping the foundation and chimney to use the foundation for future pavilion, which would necessitate, necessitate additional funding in the amount of $14,500. $530, not including the future pavilion, which would be necessary to move forward with the project. Some of my additional concerns or apprehension of moving forward in this direction is what's next. Uh, we've taken the house down. We've secured the foundation by erecting a temporary structure uh, of, a gr of a ground level pit pitched wooden frame, shingled roof with no additional funding to move forward. My trepidation is we've replaced one structure with another temporary structure with no funding to move forward with the construction of a, of a pavilion. What do we do to, what have we done to improve the park? Um, my issue is, is the house has been up for discussion for, for a number of years. Um, it has been in a, um, become a dilapidated uh, property um, for several years now. Um, and it's, it's, so if we replace it, it's become an eyesore. Um, it's become, uh, it has a tarp on it. It really takes away from the beauty of the natural park itself. So if we move forward without the additional funding to build a pavilion on top of it, we are now, as I just mentioned, is we are replacing one problem, one structure with another structure without any funding in order to move forward with this. Um, so, you know, I believe that part one of the reasons why we were keeping the foundation on the house was for storage. Um, well, seeing the ad alternate comes in for, for an additional $40,000 to, to save, save the foundation without actually receiving quotes at this point, but understanding what the cost of storage building would be. Um, you know, I believe that we would be able to purchase an adequate size storage building for anywhere between five and $15,000, depending on the size um, that we decided to go with. Um, and then we would also have an open canvas. We would be able to put the pavilion wherever we like. One of the other, you know, one of the other reasons for saying this is there's no historical value to the property. Um, there's no nostalgia to, to, to the property um, or to the house itself. Um, you know, we've all seen the, 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 the chimney at Philly Park. Um, you know, that, that hasn't had a structure around it since it came down several years ago. Um, that's one of my concerns there is just to have a free floating chimney and a low level foundation. How long do we keep it in that state for uh, without any additional funding to, to move forward? So that is really my concern is what's next? How long do we keep it in this area? You know, my goal is to, to get to this property. We're, we're moving forward. We're making strides in order to get this to an, to an attractive park. Um, and I think, you know, like I said, my recommendation is to, to tear the house down it allows us to have the a clear passage from the heart of the park down to the river um, with the hope of being able to get canoers and kayakers down there in the near future. 
Um, uh, if there are any questions, I'll be more than happy. Councilor Wong. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I have not been following this particular issue closely, so I'm think I'm thankful for the kind of the rundown from staff. Um, I guess I wanted to understand and to water it down a bit to understand the two pathways. So through you, Madam, Ch uh, Madam Mayor, Dave, we're saying we have everything in the budget to continue with the demolition of the plan. We don't get to keep the foundation nor the chimney, but we won't have any added cost to the current plan. And then we can continue with the pavilion being erected at the park. The other alternative plan is an additional $40,000 to keep the foundation and the chimney, but there is no historical value in the chimney or the foundation. Is, is, is my understanding correct? It is. Um, and that's, and that's the, the current allocation that we have. So we don't have enough money to finish the project if this comes down. We just have, if we were to move forward with my recommendation, we'd still have just over $25,000 left to continue with additional projects. Okay, does that get us the pavilion or is that another? It would not get us a pavilion. Gotcha, oh, okay, I see. So, yeah, okay, so yeah, and I guess there's a little more clarity that maybe I'll let other counselors go because there's conflicting uh, opinions from the Parks and Recs Committee versus what we're mm -hmm. talking about now. So I guess we just kind of want to I just want to water it down again because I haven't been following this issue closely as far as, you know, what are our options, what is best for the future of our park system, what is best for the taxpayers and the dollars in their pockets. And I was under the impression there was some historical value, but there isn't. So I guess that alleviates some of my concern initially from keeping some of the history uh, in, in Bloomfield. I know maybe there's some ambiance. I haven't been to the park in quite some time, so I, I don't have a visual of the chimney, unfortunately. Um, but those are my initial questions, Madam Mayor, for now. Thank you. I think I like Councillor Wong's train of thought that pavilion for $25,000. I'm just saying. <laughs> I think that'd be great if we could get that done. Um, I'm going to go with Councillor Merritt, the Deputy Mayor, Councillor Calhoun, Councillor Curtin. Uh, Madam Chair, thank you. Um, I think I followed most of that, but I'm not sure how much more we would have to spend to finish the pavilion off, which I would prefer as an alternative. Uh, if, if it's a matter, how much money additional would you need now to finish it up now? So we don't, we do not have cost estimates for it. In the plan, it was, it was 100,000 plus is what they put in. Um, understanding that this is a design build, um, my request in the capital budget was $150,000 because we would need to hire an architect in order to come in and to build, design and build um, due to the, based on the, uh, the foundation that we have on site. Um, so that is my best guess to this point. But until we actually obtain the services of an architect to come in, um, I cannot provide an, an actual figure for you. But it's definitely north of it's definitely north of one hundred thousand um, dollars. There was we did look at. Uh, we know West Harper built something a, a nice pavilion with a chimney. I believe they completed the project last year, um, and I believe that that was in the two hundred thousand dollar range. How much would it cost just to preserve the foundation and the chimney situation, so that when we do have one hundred fifty thousand dollars or whatever, uh, we can finish it up. $40,000. So you preserve it for $40,000 with basically putting another structure on top of it. You're basically putting a pitched roof on top of the foundation. Okay. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I listened to, the, to your proposal at the uh, A&E committee and I abstained on the vote. It was just, I just couldn't figure out where we were going with this and why we were going with this and why all of a sudden we had to tear the building down after 25 years. I know it's been sitting there, but since of 2018, we've had a plan that said, we're going to put a pavilion on top of the foundation in that location. And I don't understand why we didn't take steps to determine whether or not that was even feasible, first of all. Uh, and then uh, if, it, 
if it was, um, uh, or if it wasn't, that would be that would have been a really easy solution to the problem. But there seems to be a, some unfortunate uh, differences of opinion between uh, the uh, the director and the uh, parks commission, which is unfortunate because it creates a gap that needs to be resolved. I think we all would be much happier if you're all on the same page. Um, and um, I, I, cannot, I cannot see spending the money to demolish the building to put a false roof over it, which as you say, uh, David, that you know, your trepidation is that could be there for another five or six years. I don't wanna see that either. I, I don't think it's, it's a waste of money to do that, to put $40,000 to save the foundation and put a roof over it, that's probably gonna cost you 15. It makes no sense. So for, for me, I would say time out and say, well, let's, if, if we're gonna take the building down, let's take it down after we get all this other information, maybe it's next year. It's not going anywhere. It's not bothering anybody. And it's not, it's not giving us the opportunity to make the best, inf best decision we can based on the information. I can see from your point of view, uh, it would be it would be better to clear the site and have a clean slate and move on. That's one that's one solution. It is a solution, and it's a, it's it's an equally good solution. However, we have the plan that everybody agreed on, and no one said no one no one has eliminated that agreement as yet. So it's kind of frustrating to be uh, between here and there. I, I would again just to summarize, I would like to see if see if we can get some. Uh, 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 professional information that designed for for the uh, uh, design build for the uh, pavilion, and and see what that comes in at, and and then we can have and, and then we can take down the building and do the job right after it. And personally, I I wouldn't mind dipping into the town's uh, coffers to do this deal because it's been there for so long and waiting to happen. Uh, Let's finish it, but do it. let's 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 get our heads together. I would really like to see uh, you and some agreement before it comes back to us. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, and I I I guess I'm not a hundred percent clear on why we are demolishing the foundation unless the entire building is being moved to a new location. And uh, if Dave can clarify that for me. Um, well, the foundation was hopeful to be kept, but since, you know, to demo the house uh, with the cost for the cost, that's why the for total demo came in at $74,000 in order to retain it and then to build on top of it was the additional 40,000. Um, so it's not to move it into a different location. It's just coming in with the cost estimates and decision recommendation is coming in off of those um, as a result of uh, the, the price quotes that came in um, and in the fear of the unknown. Okay, so that that's nowhere near my area of expertise, but I, I don't agree with demolishing the foundation if the building is, is going to be placed exactly where it is. Um, but that's one lame person's opinion. Yeah, well, if, if I can just help. So pavilion can have a foundation. Most pavilions that you would see within a park system are gonna be on a slab of some sort, mm -hmm. whether it be a concrete slab or an asphalt slab. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so that's really, but the, the idea of keeping the foundation itself was potentially for storage. Um, you know, that, that, that was- Excuse me one second, Dave. Please. And mm -hmm. when I say uh, foundation, it equates to the concrete slab. I don't know if we're talking apples to apples or apples and oranges. Yeah, I think it's apples and oranges at this point because it is. It's not on okay. a slab. It's actually it's actually on a. Um, there's actually two foundations to the house that go down to, to below grade. Um, so okay. like walking into a basement. Okay. So no, if it was just a slab, would... if it was just a, if it was just a slab, it would be much much easier at this point. Okay, all right, thank you. Uh, Madam Mayor, am I up? Thank you, uh, thank you, Dave, for uh, for the presentation. Uh, I have to say, I had an opportunity to 
to kind of review what you've submitted to the committee and, and the council, and also what was submitted uh, by the Parks and Recs uh, chair. And I know that they came to the administration education and, and provided their input on you know, their opinion on what we should do. And I have to say that I support uh, what you're presenting to us. I believe that that's a gem back there and we need to make a decision how to move forward. I visited there back in, I think, 2018. So I'm well aware of uh, the location and the house and, and the state that it's in currently. I know that the SWAT is using it also as a, a training, uh, is that correct? A training location, Dave? They, they have, that has since ceased. Um, okay, but yes, that, they, they were at one point in time. Yeah, <laughs> so I believe there's a lot of aesthetics that removing the building and, uh, uh, and the foundation it's a really good location that if we could start moving, folks can enjoy that area. And I do like the plan that you have in place. So I support that and hope that other uh, members of this council would do the same because I think it's a good plan to get us using that, that space. Uh, thank you. I'm gonna go with Councilor Goff and then Councilor Politis. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, let's see, I, I, I have, quite a bit to say about this. Um, first of all, I, I was, <laughs> I, just to make a comment, uh, and I know that Council Wong mentioned this, there was a Mother's Day hike. Uh, it was actually in the Farmington River Park. We got, uh, uh, the, this was a, a, a trees, Blo Bloomfield uh, beautification, trees for Bloomfield, uh, C CEC joint project. We got a lot of um, people who had never been in the park and to echo what Councilor Curtin just said and what I have seen when I have led hikes in this park, uh, as soon as anyone sees this park, uh, they go, I didn't know about this, this is great. I didn't know we were on the river. I didn't know we had these views. I didn't know we had this kind of facility. Uh, they are always appalled at what, we what, what the town let happen to the house. Um, I agree, I, I guess where I am on this is basically the same place the deputy mayor is. Uh, I, I never assumed that, well, I never assumed that the, we're going to demolish the house and put up a pavilion was going to potentially be a long-term separated project that we would have to build a $40,000 roof, uh, to protect the, the foundation, the basement that is in there. So first of all, I think, I don't think there was any anticipation of this kind of time gap. Um, secondly, another point that has not been brought up, there seems to be quite a bit of focus on the foundation slash basement. I think that's great that we could have that kind of storage without another ancillary building that we had to take care of. But there doesn't seem to be much discussion about the chimney fireplace. Um, I would assume that the cost estimate of building such a thing uh, with the handwork that would be required into a new pavilion without, you know, without making use of what's already there would add to the cost of the new pavilion. Um, I think the main thing here is really the lack of information and the way that information has been structured. Uh, there is no imperative at this point in time, today or tomorrow, to take down the house. I do agree with, I think, the committee, <laughs> the council, uh, Mr. Malesko, everyone, that unfortunately, at this point, the house, it doesn't have major historical value. It has a little. It was owned by the Fuller family of Fuller Brush fame. It was, it was, it's sort of like their, is the, their place like Curtis Veter's uh, uh, Pinwood Park. I think it was sort of their getaway to the Farmington River. But that's not a major historical issue for Bloomfield. Uh, so I agree that the house itself, we, you know, the town, the town unfortunately has let that house be dem demolished by neglect as it has done other structures. Um, so I certainly think we're all in agreement that the, that, that at this point, the solution is for the house to come down. However, there's no imperative that that happen next week. I think that the best thing we could do at this point is, as Dep the deputy mayor said, let's take a timeout. Let's go out and get an actual estimate plan from architects 
of putting the pavilion up and then let's make a decision based on that as to what is to keep and also let's make a decision based on that that maybe it's time to put the pavilion up because uh, I do agree with Mr. Molesco's frustration that this has been in the capital budget for a number of years. The work that has occurred there has occurred because of the $150,000 that the town received from CREC for the CREC school backing out of uh, revitalizing the park. And so they have been, you know, the, the, the culvert work, the master plan, the work that has been done so far has been done as a result of the money we got from CREC. Uh, I think it's time for the town to put some money into this. And I, I, I agree that it should have been the second highest project this year, the, the splash pad being the first. But I would remind the council that one of the things we talked about last year budget, and I, I'm completely aware of the uncertainty and I completely supported the fact that we wanted to be very careful with our budgeting last year because of, of the uncertainty. But at the end of the budget process last year, we knew the pool was gonna be closed. And if you go back and look at some of the tapes, there were council members who did suggest, gee, let's dip into that $20 million reserve that we have, which we need to, we need to keep as reserve, but let's dip in and do the $150,000 to get the splash pad so that it'll be done during a year when the pool is closed and so that it will be available to the people when we are hopefully starting to celebrate a bit, open up the COVID. We didn't do that. As a result, we had to do the splash pad this year, which I completely support, I'm glad we did. But if during the budget negotiations, we had heard the same story we're hearing now, I for one certainly would have pushed for adding money to do the pavilion so that we would not get into this, this one option is to spend $40,000 to put a fake roof over the basement. I, I, I agree with that. I mean, I think everyone agrees that that is not a good idea. But we don't, you know, we don't have to choose one or the other. We can do exactly what the deputy mayor suggested. We can sit back and say, let's go out, get, a, get an actual cost estimate of what this is going to co co cost, come back to the council, we'll make a decision, and then let's move forward one way or the other. But we, but I, you know, I can't vote for anything until I have all the information, and that's what we need at this point. Thank you. Councilor Pilates, you're on mute. That would help, right? I am a little unfamiliar with the property, so I. I I do have a couple of questions. Uh, do we have any idea when the house was originally built, how old the foundation is? Um, there are additions onto the house itself. I do know, I, I do, but I do not have that information here in front of me. Um, I'm trying, I do have a copy of the assessors, but it does not tell me the year of the, of the house at this point in time. So I cannot provide that for you at the present time. Okay. It just seems to me, you know, based on my limited knowledge of construction, um, that it seems to me that starting with a, starting with a foundation and having a custom build on a foundation that's already existing, is probably going to be more cost prohibitive than starting from a fresh piece of ground where you can just pour a slab and do a post and beam construction for a, for a pavilion. Um, <clears throat> So I think overall, this is probably a better, more cost-effective plan. Um, I'm not sure, you know, I'm not sure a pavilion needs a uh, brick and mortar fireplace or we can do, um, you know, open fire pits with, you know, wood stoves or something to that extent as opposed to that. So I'm just, I guess my question is, you know, a little bit to the fact of, um, I don't understand the whole point of saving the foundation to have for storage when I think, you know, basement storage is probably less desirable than having an above ground structure that you can certainly, you know, control the humidity and better and stuff like that. So thank you. So I'm going to ask for a motion and I know that uh, Deputy Mayor, your hand is up, but I'm going to ask for a motion and then we can continue the discussion. Uh, is there a motion on the floor? Yeah, Madam Mayor. Um, 
I move forward that we uh, demolish the Farmington River Park Housing and Foundation. And I see Councilor Calhoun, are you seconding that motion? Uh, Deputy Mayor, and we've done this before, so please let's try to make this. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, respond to uh, 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 Councilor Politis's questions, Madam Mayor. Uh, first of all, uh, I don't know exactly the age of the building, but it is a concrete foundation. Uh, it, it's not uh, made out of brick, rubble, or stone. Uh, and the rear portion of the building is above is is above grade. Yeah, above grade. So it's kind of a walkout basement, is what you have. So it was uh, that reason why I, I believe the committee and the, the and and whoever worked on the plan suggested that it be retained for for uh, storage purposes. Uh, that that that's that, that's all the information. Question is. Do we keep the plan or change the plan? That's so people are have expectations, that, but we don't have the information to even say, is this pavilion, could it be designed to fit on there? Is, but if it was, you'd be able to save some of the benefits of what's there now. That's, that's the issue. Councillor Wong, Councillor Politis, Councillor Curtin. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I, I'm a little, I just feel a little unprepared with making a decision per the vote. I think that I would really like to have some more information from some key professionals um, that it doesn't seem like we haven't had the time to. And I really want to see a, resolu a resolution with the Parks and Recs Committee and staff to be on the same page. I would really feel more comfortable if we were in lockstep on that matter. So I understand that we're presenting some of our uh, risk mitigation and some of our statuses, but maybe we maybe we go back and we talk and we figure out how to make a resolution. The, the Parks and Recs Committee were was appointed for a certain charge, and I really want to make sure that there um, that there's some compromise and some more discussions. Again, I haven't been in um, in depth with this particular issue, so I'm not sure how long this has been and where the disagreement lies. But maybe we need some more information. We need just some. We need to have some more due diligence. Um, get some more facts around this. And um, I would just feel more comfortable if we just get a little more information before we make a decision. Because it sounds like although the chimney and the foundation don't have any historical value per Dave, it does have value from a community standpoint within the Parks and Recs uh, discussions that they've been having. So. Um, yeah, that, that's where I am today. I think we need some more information before we proceed to vote on something very important to the community. Thank you. Councillor Politis and Councillor Curtin. This time I'll try to hit the unmute button first. It, um, just asking for an opinion from Mr. Malesko. Um, is there, in your opinion, there is any urgency to, to do the demolition of the building at this precise time? Or, do we, or is it structurally sound enough and not a, a liability to the town to stay up for long enough to maybe reassess this? And then um, maybe for a little bit further discussion amongst our counselors, um, are we prepared to um, put a little money out to get an assessment of how much this is gonna cost and actually dig into the coffers to do this? Um, once and for all, as opposed to um, trying to do this as part of some sort of a SIP project where it's going to lap, may go on for years and years and years to come. So, I mean, those are two factors that would come into my decision. Um, and I'd be interested to hear everybody's point on the second portion of that is would we be willing to take maybe 150 to $200,000 to complete this project at this point, because I think that it was pretty clear that we were really concerned about a lot of the, uh, a lot of things in the, in, in the last budget and the money that we had stashed away. Thank you. So I can, re I can respond. Okay. Um, counselor, yes. Uh, from my understanding that the, the structure itself is still structurally sound. Um, so there is no urgency in that side. The urgency is just in order to move forward with the project and, you know, with that, it's the house being there in the state that it has been for the number of years, but it could clearly wait. Um, the, I'm sorry, what was the second part of the question you at, you asked about the, the structure itself and oh, the urgency for the, for the foundation that was directed more for the counselors. 
So that was that is something that we could do, but that is potentially adding more money to the project um, that we is is ultimately what I'm trying to save out of the current monies that we have that was out of the original allocation. Um, but if we cool. if that's the charge that I'm, that I'm asked to do, then I'll be more than happy to go that route. Well, that's just kind of my point. I mean, we're, we have X number of dollars set aside to do one thing or another here, either do something or do nothing. Um, do we want to take some of the money that we have to do something and figure out what it's going to cost to do everything and then actually put our money where our mouth is and go ahead and take that money from somewhere to do something? Um, if that's the case, then maybe we should spend ten or $15,000 to get an architectural drawing of what it's going to take to build a pavilion on the foundation. And if not, then I think we should do exactly what you say and demolish the building level the level of the land and go ahead and, um, and move forward. Because I do believe, you know, probably a pavilion on a port, you know, on a port slab with post and beam is probably a heck of a lot less expensive than a uh, custom designed building on a foundation, an existing foundation. Thank you. I'm gonna go, oh, were you, was your hand, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Councilor. Yeah, sorry, yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor. Here's what I'm going to say. Just a, just an observation sitting here. Um, we we have advisory committees. These committees are put in place as committees of residents. We we have paid staff, and if we're going to get into a debate and we're going to try to override recommendations from staff, then we have a problem. We have a serious problem, and this goes down the line. It goes down with the town manager. Are we going to continuously second guess? the folks that are paid professionals that are providing us guidance and recommendation and what's the, in the best interest of the town. When we look at this, we're looking at a narrow perspective of a few in, individual and no, they do not speak for the entire town. So let's be careful with our words. The director's providing guidance. If any one of you haven't had a chance, go by and visit that building. It's a blighted, location. It brings no value to the town. Okay. These are basically, in my opinion, these are personal things that are being displayed. Folks, this is what I want. That's not why we're here. We're here to make decisions for the town as a whole. And we run into this over and over where we're taking input from a few individuals that doesn't represent the entire community. And it's pretty frustrating for me to sit here and continuously go through this process. We have to listen to the professionals that we're paying to do this job. We're not gonna agree every time, but we can't sit here and say, oh, you need to be on the same page as uh, Parks and Recs or any other committee. That's not how we run an organization. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, Councillor Merritt, Councillor Goffin and Councillor Wong. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I, I wanted to say, I believe that house was built in the 60s, if that's helpful at all. So it doesn't go back historically that long. Um, I, I have, uh, I guess I'm a building hugger. I don't hate to see things destroyed unnecessarily. And I was, uh, I would have hoped that we could have found some way to save the house itself, but <clears throat> it became so poorly taken care of that that wasn't possible. <laughs> And I would now hope that we can <clears throat> at least look into um, saving the, the foundation um, and seeing if we can go ahead with what is decided by the committee and by the, uh, the plan of conservation, I believe. I mean, plan of uh, develop the parks plan. And um, I, I think we need to get more information. I thought the idea of using what money we have already to get a good solid study and price on, on putting a um, new building up, that would be a smart thing to do. And it would be not very smart to make a decision with limited information now. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, let's see, uh, I have a, um, you know, I have a, I have a, I have a couple of, of comments. The main, the main one is to again, uh, agree with what Council Merritt just said, what, 
what everyone just said, uh, I think of, of every, most people said about getting more information. Um, we need to know what the options are. And I think quite honestly, this, you know, from what I've read in the comments from the Parks and Rec Committee, I think this is their frustration. Um, we do need to rely on um, staff, but staff also need to get cost estimates. And I realize there is, um, you know, I, I think maybe what one of the things, the things that is going on, and this with this came up when with the budget discussions when we were talking about the um, climate emergency resolution. I think we've got to be very careful about our instructions for getting information related to funding, getting that information. Uh, I think we have to put sufficient funds into the budgets for, for the staff to be able to go out and get the information they need to communicate not only to council, but to the committees they are liaisons with. Uh, on this important project, it is important to know that how much will it cost to build the design of the pavilion that has been envisioned in the master in the master plan for the Farmington River Park, which everyone agreed on, and everyone thinks looked nice. And, and when we showed, you know, we showed that to several people in the hike on the walk, the walk, it wasn't right, a hike, the walk on Saturday, and people thought, oh, that's great. Oh, I'd like to have my wedding here. Oh, people will use the park. People want to use the park. They need, you know, that's the vision we have and we need to know how much that's gonna cost so that we can have a debate on it. But if we're always left in the situation that, well, we have incomplete information, but we don't wanna spend any money to get any information, I don't think we're gonna make very good decisions. Um, so I am in complete agreement with what Councilor Mayor just said, what the Deputy Mayor has said, I think, what several other councilors have said, uh, we need more information here. I think that will go a long way to getting consensus between town staff and uh, the Parks and Rec Committee. Uh, there is no imperative to tear that house down tomorrow. Tomorrow, I certainly agree with Councilor Curtin that it has become an eyesore and that is something that we all should be working on. To answer Councilor Politis' question, I for one, depending on what these uh, estimates come back, I'm willing to dip into funds to support that. And in fact, if we continue with our finance committee or continue with the monthly financials, we may have more money that we can move into um, uh, uh, Farmington River Park uh, SIP this year. Um, so, you know, I think we need that, we need that information and that's the way I hope we will, we will, we will move forward. Thank you. Councillor Wong. Oh, thank you. My turn. I just, a side note, I just sure hope there's this much um, energy when it's time to put some money into Bill Lee Field, but that's uh, for a later date. But anyway, I, my question to Dave is, uh, do we know how much it's going to cost to get more information? Is it going to cost? How much is that going to cost? I, I, I wish that I could provide an answer for that. And if I were to throw out a number, it would be an arbitrary number. Um, several thousand dollars plus um, you know, I'm not thinking like $20,000 or more, I, mm -hmm. but it would be under that, I would think. Okay. So it sounds like we're either going to, we're, most of us want to get more information, but in order to do that, it's going to cost some money to get that information. But Dave has to figure out the cost to get the information, to get the information. So, Okay. Um, I mean, I'm comfortable with that as far as say, hey, how, how much is it going to cost to, you know, assess the the issue as it stands tonight or today, but there is no urgency. Um, so I think I'm comfortable with that. I also, I agree, we need to some consensus building between our, our Parks and Recs committees, but we also need to lean on our staff, but it will be great if we can be in lockstep as far as the ultimate recommendation when it rolls up to council again, I do stand by that. Uh, so that was my quick question. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And I'm happy Thank to have a question. Thank you. So I am at a place where we're still on the first item in um, council old business. So I'm going to go ahead and call for a vote. There was a motion. There was a second. All in favor? All opposed? 
Madam Mayor, uh, just a point of order. Um, Councilor Goff, um, uh, your wife is on the committee, sir. Are you gonna abstain from this vote? Certainly not. Okay, that's an ethical question on your part, but that's fine. So um, it, it's a split vote. So I believe at this point, the um, we're gonna have to, at some point in time, re-vote. Um, Attorney Needleman's on the, uh, on the call. I think because it's a split vote, attorney, you know, Mark. Okay, so it's a split vote, right? So, um, Madam Mayor, I just yes. want to state for the record, please. I just okay. wanted to reinforce my point. Point of order: This is not a discussion piece. The Madam no. Mayor was talking. Let the mayor finish. I let Mark Needleman chime in. One, um, once again, um, uh, Attorney Needleman, we have a split vote. Split vote means the motion does not carry. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, Councillor Curtin. Madam Mayor. Yes, sir. Before you move ahead, I wanted to make it clear for the record. It's common for council members, I just want it for the record, if there's a conflict and there's clearly one here, Councillor Goff, wife is on the committee and also send in um, a recommendation to the council today. So I think it behooves me that he decided to vote. It's been common practice of council members if there is a conflict of interest. So I just want to state that for the record. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor. We're going to go to Council New Business 20 slash 21 76. Consider and take action regarding the approval of the application for the quality uh, school readiness grant program. And we do have Go uh, Gail, Gail uh, Nolan on the call. Gail, do you want to give? I know we do this every time, but we do have some new counselors. So if you could just give us a brief background, and then I'll take a motion and a vote. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. So uh, school readiness is a grant put out by the Office of Early Childhood, um, which um, goes to fund sliding scale spaces for children three and four year old in preschool. So Bloomfield still qualifies for a priority uh, status in those grants and our total funding um, allocation has remained the same as the past few years. So um, we are applying for $702,845. Um, and an, a separate grant, which is quality enhancement for $8,035. So um, that's about almost $9,000 per slot um, for each of these um, three and four year olds um, that mostly reside in Bloomfield. We do have a 10% allocation for out of town. Most of those people are um, work in Bloomfield. So um, a lot of people like to have um, childcare where, near where they work. Um, the centers that we have currently are First Congregational Child Development Center, and First Academy um, at First Cathedral. And um, we did open up um, applications this year and um, received uh, two new grants, uh, one from um, Creative, Creative Hearts Learning Academy and another from the Bloomfield Learning Center. Um, so the count, our uh, School Readiness Council is recommended funding um, three centers this year. First Congregational at 44 slots, full, uh, full day, full year, and two part day slots. First Academy at 20 slots, a full, full day, full year, and Creative Learning coming on with 10 uh, new slots this year. Excellent, thank you. Um, I see Councilor Calhoun's hand. Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. I um, have a question for Gail. Does school readiness qualify for COVID monies? The in center, addition to? Yes, so the centers um, have been receiving some supplemental income um, throughout the year. Um, some of their uh, slots and parent fees have been subsidized. Um, they were able to um, get extra supply money for some um, 
COVID um, protective equipment. Uh, we did that with some of our quality enhancement grants as well. The School Readiness Council voted that um, any center in Bloomfield could apply to receive um, re uh, supply reimbursements for up to $1,000. Uh, home daycares could apply for $500 for that. Home daycares could also apply for um, quality enhancement grants of $500, which we've been doing over the last several years. Um, we reimburse for staff um, taking uh, classes or trainings that are needed in early childhood um, as scholarships, also scholarshiping um, parents to um, with, with their family fees. In addition to that, Gail, um, the, the grants aren't disqualified by receiving COVID monies. No, no, that's okay. an addition. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, and there'll be there'll be more coming up um, with the um, new new funding coming up as well. I believe the the um, I was on a call yesterday where um, Commissioner Beth By was talking about some of the funding coming up. We don't have amounts yet, but um, I know all of the centers are going to be getting um, funding to help them restabilize. Thank you, Gail. Thank you. I'm gonna go uh, Councillor Wong and then Councillor Merritt. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I was just ready to put the motion on the floor. I don't have any further questions, but I'll wait. Councillor Merritt. I was only gonna comment that I, I of course, of the federal government's, uh, one of the bills that is being put forth by the uh, administration would finance early learning very nicely, but that's down the road and questionable what will happen. But also I was gonna ask if uh, Belk is, has been, status has remained as it was, or has it, uh, is there any funding for Belk involved? I didn't hear you mention them. Uh, well, we were, they lost their accreditation when they were a school readiness center. Um, so according to the uh, materials that the Office of Early Childhood put out. Um, they're not able to apply for school readiness funding until they um, attain that accreditation once again. They okay. do have funding, um, they call it state funded center uh, money. Mm -hmm. So they do have slots with that still. Um, I believe somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 slots, um, which is on par with school readiness. It's the same amount of funding. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Councilor Wong, you want to go ahead and make the um, make your motion? Uh, yes, thanks. Uh, I move to approve the signing of the quality enhancement grant. Is there a second? All in favor? Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. At this time, uh, the next motions, Councilor uh, Calhoun, will be yours. 2021-78, consider and take action regarding appointment to the Bloomfield Recreation Committee. Mayor, I'm sorry. Um, you missed the item. It's a review, discussion, action, policy, one, one, oh, ten. I'm so very sorry. Okay. Uh, 2021-77, discussing possible action regarding policy 110.11, grant opportunities by town boards, commissions, committee, and agencies. Um, Councilor Goff. Yes, Madam Mayor, um, just because uh, uh, I, I saw this on the agenda, uh, could we just have some um, background on why this is being proposed, what, you know, what office it came out of, and what the reasoning behind it is before we discuss it? Thank you. I believe that uh, the town manager will give some input, but I also believe that this might be going to, or should be going to admin education. Go ahead, Mr. Shank. Uh, yes, I think that uh, there have been some applications uh, for grant funding that have been made uh, independently of the town by some of the uh, council's advisory committees. And it was thought that perhaps we better at least put some controls uh, on this, uh, at least so that the council uh, is involved with the approval process uh, for boards and commissions and so forth that might be interested in applying for grants. So that's kind of the, the background on it. Councilor Wong. 
Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I think this is a good policy. I, uh, if you remember when Jonathan Teasy brought up the urban grant program, we would, if we opted in, we would be opted out of additional opportunities from a grant perspective. So I think that this is a good way for us to cross-functionally uh, and regulatory check uh, some items at the highest level. So we don't uh, we don't make sure we don't opt out of other opportunities when it comes to getting funding from a, a larger dollar standpoint. So I think this is good and I'm willing to make the motion to refer it to admin education as well. But anyways, <laughs> thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm going to go with Councillor Curtin and then back to Councillor Goff. Um, uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I would like a little bit more content from the town manager on this because I think this is another example of where we have boards and commissions who are going off and doing things on their own. And once again, I talked about an organization and structure. We have to really go through a process in identifying that these boards and commissions are not independent of the council and the administration. There is a work in tandem in a sense where they have to go through the right uh, procedure. And uh, this is just, it, it's chaos. And this is a perfect example of what we talked about before. We have professionals, we have to let them do their jobs. Mr. Shank. Yes. Yeah, I think uh, we've had a situation here and it was a positive situation where I believe it was the uh, Beautification Committee and also the CEEC uh, have applied for grants uh, independently of the, of the town uh, without any type of uh, uh, controls over it in terms of the finances, where the money comes from, where it goes to, what are the requirements of the grant. Uh, the town gets audited on grants, uh, both federal, state, and of course, uh, by other nonprofits potentially through the Hartford Foundation or others that might be uh, applying. I, I just don't think we want to have our 30 plus or minus boards and commissions out independently applying for grant money without some form of uh, coordination at, at the council level uh, in, in terms of uh, uh, of these types of actions. So that's kind of what's generated it, so. I'm gonna let Deputy Mayor go and then Councilor Goff and then that'd be that. Yeah, yeah I, uh, I thank you for the explanation because I didn't understand why this was going on either. And uh, for uh, um, to be transparent, my wife is on the beautification committee, Councilor Curtin, but I'm gonna speak anyway. And, and I just want to say that uh, I don't have any problem as long as if, if we're creating procedures that protect and make everybody understand what's happening. Uh, I think, however, it shouldn't be misrepresented that these people went and did this on their own. They were in contact with town administration. They have departmental advisors and there was communication. Now, if there needs to be a council approval of everything that goes through for, for, for um, grant applications, that's one thing. And, that's, and that may be, may be valuable, may be worthwhile, but I don't think we should do anything that would stifle I I innovation or uh, in self-interest. Uh, how many grants did the town receive in the last year? How we don't have a motivated uh, effort to go after grants. I'm not saying that this group is, should not that, that that these that these grants shouldn't be put into some sort of context, but the town needs to be filing for grants as well, and we need to be making that and, and encouraging people to do that, not to tie their hands up necessarily. So I think whatever it is this, that we discuss with regard to this policy, it should be uh, a little bit more flexible, and allowing for people to be to be. To be uh, uh, use their own interest and motivation, not people, but organizations or committees we're talking about. Because uh, if we stifle them in the beginning by making them come to council, uh, they may not go out and do these things. Uh, and that goes for staff too. Uh, so it's a fine line. And I just think we are, I'm all for, for trying to rein, rein something in, but let's be careful the words we use. 
So I did say that we're going to go with Councillor Goff, and that's going to be it. And then I saw other hands up. Um, we still have a mighty long way to go on this agenda, and I'm just asking us, please, to be mindful of that. Councillor Goff and Councillor Curtin, I'm going to have you all both wait as Councillor Merritt has not said anything as yet. Councillor Merritt, please be brief. You're on mute. I know. I, 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 was, I just muted myself because I was going to defer to your comments, but I really strongly feel that we should encourage everybody to go out for grants and, and just and make them very clear that all we want to do is coordinate and communicate because frankly staff historically and not so much now they're doing a much better job in the last few years but bloomfield town staff has done a horrible job of looking for grants up until the last few years and i i think anybody any committee that's wants to do the groundwork that's wonderful and but I do I think it, I think the idea of keeping track of it and and having some oversight is is also desirable thank you so I'm going to um, defer uh, Councillor Merritt um, what well, you said the last couple of years because I can definitely tell you that the staff have been um, uh, um, looking for grants and applying for grants and every grant that I do see, I do send to the town manager's office. It's really important that we understand that we are not an entity unto ourselves, right? So even the grant that we got, it went to staff. Staff filled out the grant, it went to for approval and they handled it. We cannot have 30 um, advisory committees because that's what they are. We can't have 30 advisory committees all going out doing their own thing. It's not um, productive for the town who is the fiduciary of everything. And the town also needs to understand the right hand definitely needs to know what the left hand is doing because the right hand is gonna be the one that's being audited. So I agree that we need to rein it in. I agree that everyone needs boundaries and parameters so that we're protecting the entity, which is the town. Um, so I'm going to now give uh, Councillor Goff and Councillor Curtin a minute to go ahead and say what they have to say. And then I'm going to ask Councillor Wong to make an, a motion and then we're going to move on. Councillor Goff, a minute. Yes. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, no, I agree with uh, uh, most of what has been said uh, by Councillor Wong and Councillor Merritt. I, I think it's important. It's important that we know what's going on with the grants. I agree with that. But I also think, at least the way this policy is written initially, I don't think it's necessary for every grant to come before the council. I think it's necessary that we know the things that Councilor Wong was talking about, about applying for one grant, we choose lose out on others. Those are big size grants. I certainly think the size and the fiduciary responsibility of the town matters because I know there was a problem with some grants that Belk got that we were the backstop on years ago, uh, Jim Wren worked on. So I think all that's right, but I also think Councillor Merritt is exactly right. We don't want to stifle innovation by the uh, uh, different committees. And I think it can go beyond grants. Uh, when I was on CEC, we got sponsorship for spread day. Well, how does sponsorship tie into all of this? You know, so it's really a matter of communication and that the town needs to know what the committees are doing. I agree thank with you. that. So. Thank you. All righty. Councilor Curtin. I, I thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I have to say the hypocrisy is unbelievable. I've heard these same council members chastise you, a duly elected uh, uh, mayor of this town, about going around and doing things on your own. You, you cannot have it both ways. We have to go through a process. No one is saying that we shouldn't go out and get grants. This is the reason why staff is here. You cannot have it both ways. You cannot in one breath saying that, you know, the mayor of this town is not allowed to go out and try to either get grants or make commitments or do whatever, but then you wanna allow committees that are not elected, they're appointed, and I appreciate the work they're doing, but we have to follow rules. We cannot amend the rules when it benefits us. Please, let's be consistent. Thank you, Councilor. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Wong. I move to refer this item to Admin and E for um, subcommittee for further review and recommendation. Is your second, Councilor Calhoun, did you just second that? All right, all in favor? All those opposed? Any abstentions? All right, motion carries. Now, Councilor Calhoun. 2021-78, uh, consider and take action regarding appointments to the Bloomfield Recreation Committee. Um, yes, Madam Mayor. Um, 
Committee on Committees has uh, moved to appoint uh, or recommend, excuse me, Zachary Green to Bloomfield Recreation Committee. Is there a second? Yep, second. Uh, second. Uh, Councilor Curtin moved. Councilor Wong second. All in favor? All opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. 2021-79, consider and take action regarding appointment to the Bloomfield Beautification Committee. Um, yes, Madam Mayor, um, Committee on Committees uh, has moved to recommend Joanne Mitchell to uh, Bloom, excuse me, Beautification Committee. Is there a second? Second. Second. Um, Councilor, uh, Cal Councilor Curtin made, Councilor Calhoun made Councilor Curtin second. All in favor? Any opposed? Any abstention? Motion carries. 2021-80, consider and take action report appointment to the Bloomfield Housing Authority. Councilor Calhoun. Uh, yes, Madam Mayor, our Committee on Committee has recommended to move Dexter Lawson to uh, the Bloomfield Housing Authority. Is there a second? Second. Councilor Curtin, all in favor? Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. 2021-81, consider and take action regarding appointment to the Conservation Energy and Environment Committee. Councilor Calhoun. Uh, yes, uh, Committee on Committees has uh, moved to recommend Daniel White to CEEC, Conservation Energy and Environmental Environment Committee. Second. All in favor? Right. Any abstentions? Motion carries. 2021-82, uh, consider and take action regarding reappointment to the Greater Hartford Transit District. Uh, yes, Madam Mayor, uh, Committee on Committees have recommended to move uh, to have to to move to reappoint Joan Gamble, which she has. Yes, thank you. Is there a second? Councilor Curtin, all in favor? Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. 2021-83, consider and take action regarding appointments to the Public Arts Commission. Yes, Madam Mayor, Committee on Committees has uh, moved to recommend four individuals, Amanda Roy, Robert Ferger, Stefan Richmond, and Stanwick Cromwell. Second. To the public Councilor Curtin had his hand up. <laughs> Councilor Wong, second. You can put them all over there. All in favor? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Um, 2021-84, consider and take action regarding appointment to the West Hartford Bloomfield Health District. I will have to abstain from this vote. Go ahead, Councilor Calhoun. Um, yes, Madam Mayor. Um, uh oh, I lost that. Second. It is a uh, committee on committee has recommended to move, Seth Pitts. Uh, excuse me, Seth Pitts to the Bloomfield uh, West Hartford uh, Health District. Seconded by Councilor Politis, all in favor? Any opposed? One abstention, motion carries. 2021-85, discussion and possible action regarding Juneteenth Proclamation Town Holiday. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Councilor Curtin moved, Councilor Wong second. Any discussions? Councilor Goff. Okay. Yes, Madam Mayor, um, I'm in complete support of the proclamation. Uh, I am just curious, uh, I had suggested um, the, uh, currently what came back on our, um, on our council agenda was wording in italics on points two and three, which dealt with basically the Emancipation Proclamation. And, and what the effect of the Emancipation Proclamation is. We have both initial wording and the, word, the, re, the wording I'd suggested is revised wording. Um, which are we including at this point? So I think the proclamation will be uh, signed as is. Um, and I do believe that some um, research have been done. And I think that's why the proclamation is the way it is. So I think we're going to approve the proclamation as can, is. Can, can, because the, the proclamation currently makes claims about the um, effect and the historical import of the Emancipation Proclamation that I don't believe are correct. 
Okay. So once again, I think we, um, I think the proclamation was adopted um, from other uh, states and towns that have mm, right. a similar proclamation. Uh, thank you for your opinion, Deputy uh, Mayor. Um, so I, I think that, yeah, you're on, you are, yeah. See, sometimes we're on mute and can't get off. And sometimes we are off mute and we should be on mute. Um, so I think that's what this proclamation is. But we're talking about simply a matter of fact here. Okay, um, Councillor. Madam Mayor, could you have um, I'm, I'm gonna you read the, the, the proclamation the way it is right now, please? India, do you have the proclamation? Yes, hold on one second. So I think probably the, the words in italics, uh, Councillor, was your suggestion. However, the proclamation was adopted from another town's proclamation that was already signed. So I think that's where we are. Um, India, you got it? If you don't have it, I can read it. I have it right here, hold on. Okay. Okay, this is a proclamation for Juneteenth. Whereas the United States of America was founded upon the principles of equality and the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And whereas on January 1st, 1863, President Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation, which proclaimed the freedom of all enslaved persons in the North and South. And whereas each day, and especially on this June 19th, 2021, known as Juneteenth, which marks the day in 1865, when the last enslaved people of our country were informed of their freedom, the town of Bloomfield embraces the foundation of its diversity and recognizes those individuals once enslaved. And whereas Bloomfield affirms their freedom from the chains of invincibility and bondage and forever recognizes those individuals, agencies, human rights, and contributions to our town and fully condemns the actions of those who once chose to enslave other human beings. And whereas the town of Bloomfield formally apologizes to the descendants of the individuals, many of whom died without the title of a free person and fully acknowledges, respects, and recognizes them as free human beings deserving of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And now therefore be it proclaimed that I, Suzette DeBethan Brown, mayor of the town of Bloomfield, on behalf of the Bloomfield Town Council and all of the residents of this wonderful community do hereby proclaim June 19, 2021, otherwise known as Juneteenth, as a town-wide observance to remember those individuals who were enslaved those many painful years ago. Dated at Bloomfield CT this 19th day of June, 2021. So I think on our, the proclamations that we have in our packet, um, uh, the second, whereas on January 1st, 1863, President Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation, which proclaimed the freedom of all enslaved pe persons in the North and South. Counselor Goff uh, suggested the Confederate States and the third whereas each day, and especially on this June 19th, 2021, known as Juneteenth, which marks the day in 1865, when the last enslaved people of our country were informed of their freedom. Councillor Goff um, wanted to put in the former Confederacy. Um, so once again, the italicizes, uh, italics was for the suggestions that Councillor Goff made. I don't believe that it, um, it uh, strengthens and or diminish the proclamation, um, Councillor. Um, uh, Madam Mayor, I, I'm having trouble seeing with the screen. Um, India, can you stop sharing the screen? Okay, I'm sorry. It's okay. There we go. Um, Madam Mayor, may I speak? Yes, sir. Yes, no. You I, have a minute, one minute. Well, well no, it's, it, this is not, it takes a minute. It's a matter of fact. Uh, what came across initially was that the Emancipation Proclamation freed the slaves in the North and the South. And that simply is not true. <laughs> the Emancipation Proclamation was proclaimed by President Lincoln to free the slaves in the Confederacy. 
the slaves in the rest of the country were, were freed with the adoption and ratification of the 13th Amendment. So it, it's just a matter of fact. That's all I'm, the rest of the proclamation is great. <laughs> That's okay. my only comment. So, um, if, uh, uh, so there's a motion on the floor and there's a second. Um, if we can go ahead and vote on the motion with a, um, we'll probably do some tweaking, okay? Um, so can I have a, um, can I have a friendly amendment to the motion that we will look at it and if it needs to be tweaked, it'll be tweaked. Okay, second, all in favor, all opposed, all abstentions, motion carries, excellent, thank you. 2021-86, um, discussion and possible action regarding the Con Conservation Energy and Environment Committee's Climate Emergency Resolution. Is there a motion on the floor? Uh, Madam Mayor, I move to suspend this item. Apparently there were some changes and uh, the town attorney is reviewing it, so, uh, I, I move to uh, postpone it until the next um, admin and education meeting uh, to move forward. Is there a second? There's a second. So let me just give some background. So we had a meeting at admin and education. The, um, the uh, resolution was um, edited at that meeting. There was an agreement at that meeting. Um, India made the changes based on the agreement that was at that meeting. Then there was um, uh, different iterations after that meeting. So it was sent to the town attorney for him to look it over and to give us some feedback on it because it was not the motion that came out of the admin education meeting that was supposed to come to the council. The attorney um, rightfully said it was late he did not have the time to look over what was being presented now for him to give an opinion. So that's why we are right here where we are. So, um, there's a motion on the floor to postpone. There's a second um, discussion. I see Councillor Goff. Actually, I'm not a, I'm not muted. Um, uh, well, I uh, yes for discussion. Uh, I can't vote for the motion to to postpone this. Certainly not to send it back to admin education. Um, I've looked at the word changes. These are these are minor tweaks. They ha should have nothing to do with the town attorney. Uh, I would be you know if 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 this has to be, if if we really feel that given changing, you know get funded to sufficient funding or whatever the, the minor changes were. If we really feel the town attorney has to sign off on that kind of wordsmithing, um, then I, you know, you know, postponing it to the next meeting of the council and voting on it with the uh, approval of the town attorney is all I could, uh, all I could uh, support. This certainly doesn't need to go back to committee. Thank you. Councilor Wong. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I, I, I also agree that there's been a lot of bureaucracy thrown at this resolution. We've recycled this, this item and the committee has been advocating time and time again. Um, and I understand we have a correct iteration and a correct version out there. And maybe that's the one we vote on tonight. These are minute uh, changes. This isn't anything huge. We've talked about this. There's been multiple discussions in subcommittee meetings on council. This has been a transparent piece of it. And uh, it just seems like a miscommunication from an administrative standpoint. And we got to get stuff done. This is a good thing. I think we're all in agree agreement and um, agreement. Excuse me. And you know, let's just let's just move forward with this. That that's my two cents. Thank you, Councillor Curtin and Councillor Merritt. All right. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I, I just want to add uh, from a process standpoint. Um, when an item is in committee and there are changes, uh, what I would expect from that standpoint on is for staff to work on making those changes that came out of the meeting. It didn't happen apparently in this case. Um, so once again, we have to follow process. And while some members may want to just move ahead and pick and choose, because we've had items before that come before the council that was sent back to committee to make a uh, few minor changes. So once again, uh, we just need to be consistent with how we do things. And we cannot 
vote on something and then it gets to us and then there's changes and then we just move ahead with it. So what my recommendation would be is to either send this item back to committee or make the changes before the next council meeting. Either way, it has to be done the right way. I'm gonna uh, deputy mayor and then councilor Marriott. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Do we have uh, an understanding of what those changes are that are that are so seem so important at this point? It seemed like we all we did reach an agreement in committee. The language was pretty good. Was there anything that came back that was totally different than what we said? I don't, I, can you say anybody? So I'm not I'm not sure, but because we were all here in the committee, if someone would want to make a friendly amendment that we pass the resolution um, that was sent out of committee, right? Because I believe that's what's in everybody's packet. That might be helpful so that we can get this done. I'm, I'm good with that. There, there's a friendly, oh, there's a friendly amendment on the floor. Yeah. That, and there's a second. Oh my goodness. Yeah. All in favor? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Aye. Everybody, we voted. I want to go home. We, that's wait, who, I'm who, with wait. you. Who second that? Uh, um, Rickford took the friendly amendment. Councillor Wong uh, seconded the friendly amendment. And I think we all voted. Everyone, all in favor, say aye. Aye. All in favor. Aye. Any opposed? <laughs> Any abstentions? Motion carries. Okay. What? I'm, so, what so let me just let me just be clear. So I'm the sorry. friendly amendment, the friendly amendment was to do was what? Was to pass the resolution that's in our packet. Okay. The resolution that we had within our David. David, once again, your mic is hot. Okay. Your your mic is hot. Thanks. Um, to pass the resolution that's in the packet. Okay. I mean, guys, it's 918 and we still have stuff to do and we still have an uh, uh, executive session and we're talking about moving things forward and getting things done. That's what we did out of committee. We moved it forward. So now let's get it done. India. Okay. So the friendly amendment uh, is to pass a resolution in the council packet. What, what's going on with the postponement of until the next meeting? We're, we're, oh, the, the, I amended. That was the done. friendly yeah. amendment. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. So, um, 2021-87, discussion and possible action regarding updating and reviewing of advisory committee charges. I believe this is supposed to be going to admin and education. Is there a motion on the so floor? Move. Is there a second? There's a second with Councilor Wong. Questions? Councilor Goff. Madam Mayor, um, I, I have no problem with reviewing this, okay. and I assume that the Let's impetus for this was the... Uh, town managers comments several times about the number of committees we have. I'm fine with this. I, however, I can't support the motion as it stands because they were sending something dealing with the charges and purposes of committees to admin and education. This should go to committees on committees. I, I, I don't even know why we have committees on committees if they're not the ones to look at this. So uh, I, I would make a friendly amendment that this goes to committee on committees. Second. So I think the maker of the motion has to be the one to agree to the second amendment, to the friendly amendment, and then we can second it. So, um, Councillor, would you be, uh, uh, can this go to committee on committees for them to look over the charge? Yeah, that's fine. That's, okay. That's, yeah. And Councillor Wong second it. Councillor um, Merritt, do you have anything germane to this? No, you're just ready to go home, aren't you? All in favor of this going to uh, committee on committees? All in favor, uh, ex excellent. 2021-88, um, uh, considering take action regarding tax appeals and settlements. I believe we're gonna be discussing this in exec. Okay, so we'll come back and take care of that. Reports from our town manager and our mayor. So um, I'm gonna go, um, Councillor Wong talked about everything that's taking place. The MLK mural unveiling will be a celebration on the 19th. It's going to be absolutely, uh, absolutely wonderful and exciting for our town. Um, celebrate Bloomfield concerts on the green. Um, Friday night, it's going to be a whole family night at uh, 330 Park Avenue. Saturday is going to be a pop-up shop, food trucks. It's going to be a celebration on the green. Saturday night, we're going to be celebrating some of our students um, at the mayor's ball. This mayor's ball is really for, for everyone to come back out. The tickets are have been cut uh, drastically from the last time we had the ball. 
wonderfully enough, we have enough sponsors to cover the ball. Um, on Sunday, Octagon Bicycle is going to be doing a bike ride. We're going to be having a family picnic day at Philly Park. It's going to be absolutely wonderful. Um, as of the 6th, 45.14% of our town has been fully vaccinated, which I think is a wonderful thing. Um, if anyone is still in need of a COVID-19 vaccine, every Monday from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. at 3.30 Park, there is a vaccination clinic. You do not have to have an appointment. Let me say that again. You do not have to have an appointment. And if Mondays are no good for you, on Thursdays at 46 Kane Street, the old stop and shop in West Hartford, there is a vaccination clinic from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. You do not have to have an a, a appointment for that vaccination clinic either. There will be a vaccination clinic at the Winton McMahon Library. Um, I believe it's Saturday the... Okay, so I'm not quite sure of the date, but it, we will have that information circulating through the town. At this time, we will have our report from our town manager. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just a couple of things I know the council knows, but some of our uh, participants may not know, but our annual town budget for fiscal year 21-22, uh, it was voted in on uh, May 3rd last week. Uh, there's a 0 .1, uh, 0 0.57 increase in the, in the mill rate. It's a 1.64% uh, tax uh, increase. Uh, the Public Works Department is out doing street sweeping and in some cases catch basin cleaning is part of our uh, stormwater uh, MS4 program. Uh, in addition to that, uh, I think I've told the council, but I wanted to let everybody know our assessor is uh, will be leaving uh, Bloomfield. He's accepted a position as the assessor in Enfield uh, starting June 1st. So we are currently reviewing job descriptions and the process and everything, and we'll be moving uh, forward to uh, recruit for, for a replacement assessor. We're in the process of uh, bringing in some transitional assistance so that we can go ahead and continue to process uh, the necessary appeals that we have going and uh, conduct the normal uh, work in our assessing office. Um, we are on the verge or on the cusp as was mentioned, I think by Gail Nolan earlier of getting uh, some uh, really good advice, hopefully from the treasury department at the federal level on the ARP or the American Relief uh, Program uh, coming up. And there will be guidance in there on the money that the town will end up receiving. We uh, have received word subject always to change and modification that may we may be receiving up to $2.2 million in additional uh, funding from the federal government due to the COVID pandemic. Uh, there are some restrictions and that's what we're waiting for from the Department of Treasury. And as soon as we get those, uh, we'll go ahead and look at what we can do and what we can't do and how we have to do it. So uh, that's a, a good process. Uh, the town manager search process, uh, the mayor and uh, the council search committee will be meeting uh, this week uh, and, and next week with the search consulting firm. Uh, applications, I believe, close tomorrow. Uh, and so uh, I'm sure the mayor and uh, search committee will be updating the council as we go forward on, on the process. So that completes my report. Thank you very much. Um, we're going to go into approval of minutes. Uh, if we can have an approval for our May 3rd, 2021 special meeting. Is there a motion on the floor? So Councillor Curtin, Councillor Goff, second. All in favor? Any abstentions? Motion carries. April 26, 2021, regular meeting. Is there a motion? So Councillor Calhoun, Deputy Mayor, all in favor? Any opposed? Any abstentions? Council at uh, April 22nd, 2021 special meeting. Is there a motion? Councilor Calhoun, Deputy Mayor, all in favor? All opposed, any abstentions? Council I believe Calhoun. I need to I, I wasn't present. One abstention. Council comments, we'll start with Councilor Merritt. 
You're on mute, you're on mute. You're mute. Did he leave? <laughs> okay, so he didn't have any comment. Okay. I think he turned off his screen rather than turning on his uh... <laughs> Councilor Calhoun. Um, yes, Madam Mayor. Um, I really don't have too much to say. It's just that I just want to reiterate what was stated earlier. Um, um, we we need to really keep uh, our, our our council brother in our in our hearts and and prayers. And with the loss of his wife, that's tremendous um, for him. And right now, I know he's grieving immensely. Um, so uh, we we need to just uh, do that. Um, other than that, uh, I know we're coming out of COVID, but we should still be mindful and continue to be safe. I'm ready to take my mask off just as uh, the next person is. But um, again, we, we, we are just not out of the woods. I will say at my uh, place of uh, work here, we just lost a comrade, believe it or not, due to COVID. And that's and he that and he stated that um, he wasn't willing to take the the vaccination, and it's unfortunate that that uh, he uh, has passed away. So I'd like to keep his family lifted up as well, and our thoughts and prayers. Um, and with that said, I'm looking forward to getting out and about, and uh, with the weather changing, and just enjoying our town. Thank you very much. Excellent. So sorry to hear about your colleague, Councillor Goff. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And yes, uh, Councillor Calhoun, I'm sorry to hear that. I'm sure that's a devastating thing in the workplace. Uh, very, very sad. And uh, especially when hopefully a, a bit of the end is in sight. Um, let's see, I, I just had, um, I, I think it's been mentioned several times of all of the great events we had in the last couple of weeks for the uh, Trees for Bloomfield initiative and uh, what a great public service that's doing to uh, our town and hopefully improving the quality of life. I also want to mention in terms of, uh, in terms of economic development a bit, uh, everyone should be aware that this is American Craft Beer Week. And, uh, you know, Bloomfield is a, a lucky place because we have two of the larger uh, independent craft beer um, craft beer entities in the state of Connecticut, uh, Hooker and Back East. And both are doing quite well. I think they've weathered, I know Back East has weathered the pandemic quite well. Uh, this is the kind of small local business that we need to promote. It is the kind of thing that easily integrates with other things such as farm to table products, uh, local growing of hops, um, and um, things like the Greenway ultimately. So um, it's, not, it's American Craft Beer Week. So uh, check out the events at both Hooker and Back East and start to get out. So uh, with that, I will say good night. Thank you. Councilor Politis. Uh, just like to reiterate um, my thoughts and prayers to Patrick and his family. Um, the loss of uh, a wife is devastating. Um, uh, look forward to him, you know, coming back um, and having a conversation with him. Um, and also to Councillor Calhoun for the loss of her colleague. Um, COVID has been a real struggle for everybody in this country. And um, it, it's, it's, it brings, it becomes reality when it gets that close to home. So um, just thoughts and prayers for everybody tonight. Thank you. Councillor Curtin. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, want to start off as well, uh, Councilor Calhoun, the loss of your colleague and um, uh, Councilor Politis. I did have an opportunity to talk with uh, our our colleague um, uh, DiLorenzo. I mean, he's having a tough time, and uh, definitely we need to pray for him and keep him in our thoughts. And you know, he's going through a tough time. He's going to need all of us to kind of rally around him and get him back. Um, with us. Um, I, I, always, I had a conversation with someone today who came into my office and this person actually said that they're not taking the vaccine and they're hesitant because of a lot of information that's out there. And I think it's important for us uh, in leadership to 
to spread the word, uh, share our experience, and especially for, for, for who on this council have taken the vaccine to, to help others. I think that's important. We need to get the maximum amount of folks in the community uh, for us to get to, to back to some sort of normalcy. So I think it's gonna take all of us to do our part. Um, in addition to that, I just wanna circle back to conversations we're having earlier. I think it's important for us to, to, to be careful and to be well aware that we serve the public at large. Uh, while I may have special feelings about my street and what I want to happen or my neighborhood, I'm always reminding myself that I'm not here to take care of my neck of the woods or whatever the case is. I was elected to serve the public at large. And every decision that we make and everything that we do, we always have to go back to, and to make sure we, we, we check that and say, okay, am I making a decision here for the town or is it a personal thing or is it for just a, uh, a special group? And I think we have to conduct ourselves in that manner. Too often this council is caught on doing things that are either for themselves in a sense or for any special group. We have to start doing things for the community at large. And if it benefits the community, we do it. But we cannot, we cannot be circumventing the process. We cannot be telling staff, oh, what, what you say doesn't matter. We're just gonna go ahead and do what we want. We cannot run uh, this operation like this. We have to let the professionals, we have to let the next town manager see that he's able, him or her is able to come in to this organization and do their jobs. Uh, we cannot do that. We weren't elected to nitpick in every single area. We're here to implement policies. We're not here to run town operation. We're not here to have our wives or whoever call in town staff. Point of order. This sounds like a personal attack. Madam Mayor, this, is my, this is my opportunity. Yeah, and you still have to go by Robert's order. order. Wait, 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 Madam counselors. Mayor. Wait, come on. Madam Mayor. Come on. May I? Robert's of order, no personal attacks. May Continue, I speak? Please. You may. This is not an attack. This is, this, is, this is reality. We cannot, and we cannot have members in this council. It's, it's unethical. Who's it's doing gotten it? It's got to a point. It's unethical. Names. It's on you, Deputy Mayor, you and Councilor Goff cannot allow your wives to be instructing staff what to do. I cannot sit back any longer and see that happen. It's not the way that this organization needs to run. Madam Mayor, point of order, personal This is no point of order. This members. is my council comments. And I will be allowed to speak just like everyone else, Madam Mayor. You're allowed to speak. You're not allowed wait, to make wait, 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 wait. No okay, one speaks so like you. Richard. Guys, guys. Can I speak? Guys, oh. please let's try to keep our um, comments not personal. We are, all, we are all entitled to our feelings, but let's not get personal with them. Madam Mayor, this is not personal. This is not feelings. This is a reality. It's happening and someone needs to do something about it because we're in the process of hiring a new town manager. This cannot continue to happen. We cannot have folks circumventing town staff, the town manager and doing what they want. It just cannot continue. And I just wanted to put it out there. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor. Um, Councillor Wong. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I Thoughts and prayers go out to our colleague, Patrick, uh, for the loss of his wife. And, and Councillor Calhoun, I'm very sorry for your loss too from a colleague standpoint. Um, that's very unfortunate. So um, I know he's on our hearts and minds. I am very excited for the talent that we have appointed tonight to our various commissions and boards, commissions and boards. Uh, we have some superstars and I'm just really uh, looking forward to the talent that they bring to the table. So I'm really happy that that's done. And we have some new commissions, including the arts commission, and we have some fresh uh, minds going into the CEC as well as the parks and recs committee. So I'm really excited to see some some fresh blood here, uh, you know, um, as we move forward and really do some work of the town. 
Uh, and just a reminder, you know, we are elected officials that represent a base and we our base may not look the same and we may fight and debate over the political issues that we believe in. And we and that's OK. And because we don't agree doesn't mean we're circumventing a process because we don't agree doesn't mean it because, you know, it's not your way or the highway, if you will, speaking to all the counselors. We're here to debate. We're here to uh, create policy. We're here to. Uh, and it, it's by majority vote. So this is a democracy. This isn't a private sector. We we can do the things we need as long as we have the votes to do that. So um, I do denounce personal attacks. We should keep this professional. We should have respect the decorum. And again, we are elected officials to represent our own perspective base. And we just have to respect each other um, by respecting ourselves in the process. And with that, I know we have executive session. So I do want to wrap that up with a, a quote. Uh, the responsibility of leadership is not to come up with all the ideas, but to create an environment in which great ideas can thrive, uh, unknown the internet. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I wasn't going to say very much of anything, but I was very much perturbed by comments by uh, the council people that nothing has been circumvented. Town staff knows exactly what's going on, at least with the so with the group that I'm, that you're referring to with respect to me, town staff knows, and I, I would like to have the town manager comment at some point if he feels up to it, that he, these volunteers are giving of their time and service for our town. It's not one area, not one place, not one block. It's all over town and they're giving their time and they're making our town better. This is what we want to see happen. It's not a matter of who's doing it, it's that it's getting done. And I'll tell you, one of the best things I heard was during the last, uh, uh, on, on Arbor Day, when the group was planting on Rockwell Avenue, one of the students came over and said, I can't wait for 20 years to come back and see what I planted, what I did here. That's the kind of feeling we want in this town. It's not of who, it's of us, all of us, and we are working together, whether you think we are or not. And I don't. And I, and I take I take extreme umbrage of the fact that you even think that way. So I uh, that, that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. So wow, thank you um, very much to the counselors. Here is the thing, um, and I'm, I wasn't going to say much because I'm I'm with Joe. I've been with Joe since he put his hand up to end the meeting. But here's the thing: we're all volunteers. None of us on here gets paid to do anything. We all do it out of the um, desire to serve our committee, our community. That's why we're all here. However, there is boundaries, right? I know the counselor Goff has dragged me in the newspaper when he thought that I was doing things without anybody knowing, right? So if that's fine for me, then it should be fine for everybody else. Here it is. We need to bring it in. Why? Because we're looking for a new town manager. And I'm sure that whoever is out there looking is going to be watching our meetings and how we treat each other and how we treat our current town manager. We've got to do better all around. It can't be good for you when you're doing it and bad for me because I'm doing it. The only thing we're saying is let's bring it in for the betterment of the town, the betterment of the town staff, and the betterment of us who are volunteers. That's all. That's all that needs to be um, brought into space and mind. And if we can just be mindful of that, I think we would serve ourselves and our community better. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's about our community. But you can't do it and think it's right if it's wrong and not expect someone to call it out. And you can't call it out if you think it's wrong, but you can't call it out when you're doing it. You know, that thing, take the, take the moat out of your eye before you try to take it out of somebody else's eye. If you want more explanation on that, I can do it offline. But let's just try to get back into some decorum. Thank you. At this time, um, we're going to go into executive session with the town manager, the town attorney, and the assistant to the town manager. We'll be discussing uh, pending claims and litigations. Is there a motion on the floor? Mm -hmm. I saw Joe Merritt. 
I saw a second by Councillor Curtin. Let's go into executive session and we will be back. I think I'm.